Stevens dominates as rain curtails play. Despite a good start from their hosts, decent knocks from Jordan Cox, Ollie Robinson and Jack Leading had put Kent in control at the county ground. Some ballistic late hitting from Darren Stevens ensured the visitors would start the second day of play at 309 for 7, while Stevens returned to the crease in the same form he left it, blasting boundaries off the first couple of overs, he'd begin to run out of partners, as Matt Milnes edged Tom Taylor through to Alex Wakeley in the slip cordon. That couldn't derail Stevens though, with another punch drive through the covers, he brought up the team 350 and reached his 80th first class 50. The loss of Harry Podmore threatened to bring a premature end to Stevens' intrepid innings, stumped as he came down the pitch to the spin of Keo. But Kent ploughed on, new man Miguel Cummins flaying Keo to the boundary to breach 400 runs for the visitors. And with the last man in, Stevens gave it the long handle, flipping one over the leg side boundary to move to 89. Was a century on the cards? One more inventive boundary took him closer. And he got there with a single off of Sanderson, a 35th century of his career sealed and 16,000 first class runs on the horizon. Alongside Cummins, he took his side past 450 runs, but they'd be unable to go much further. Cummins had his middle stump removed by Taylor with lunch fast approaching, and Kent would head into the interval, all out for 455. After lunch, the home side were only able to add nine without loss, before the entire rest of the session was lost to rain. When they did return, Ricardo Vasconcelos had clearly not enjoyed the wait and found quick boundaries. Stevens caused Ben Curran a few problems with the ball, this one lucky to get through the cordon. But no sooner had the score reached 50, the teams were off for rain once again. Kent found their first breakthrough in fortuitous circumstances. Ben Curran dragged on, caught between two mines. Vasconcelos, meanwhile, was enjoying himself, and his enterprising start saw him reach a quick fire half century of 47 balls. Rain brought a premature end to the day, with the score 91 for 1, and North Ants off to a steady opening in their reply to Kent's first innings total of 455. 